Okay, welcome. All right, in this video, we are analyzing World War I propaganda posters. We'll take a look at a few different examples from different countries of what propaganda posters look like, what are some common features, uh, what kind of messages are they trying to get across, and what is propaganda? This is an interesting map from World War I. This map is showing some propaganda where we've got countries depicted as different kind of uh, cartoon characters or animals. We've got this British bloke here and a big Russian bear and what looks like some uh, some like Russian Cossacks on horses. Uh, Austria, sorry, Austria, Hungary and Germany in the middle here, like a clown being pulled apart and attacked by different countries and the big eagle and it says up here, kill that eagle. So it's a way of persuading people. Propaganda is information that is used to influence an audience and further an agenda. So it's trying to share a single perspective and convince you. The aim of World War I propaganda was to recruit troops, to sign up and enlist, to join, join the army and help out. It was to build support for the war, so to convince people um, that they should be helping out and that uh, the war was an important cause. And it could also be to encourage people to buy war bonds. So these are a way of kind of lending money to the government so that they can fund the war effort. So it might be to buy war bonds. It might be to save food, um, save important um, scrap metal. Um, could be also to join up to help out in other ways, whether if you're a, a worker and we'll see that as well, even if you're not joining uh, the military. So posters were a cheap and effective way to spread simple messages, especially now because there'd been an improvement in the technology, the printing press technology to, to make these posters. This was the best way to share uh, propaganda. There was no, uh, no Facebook and uh, social media, which would be an easy way to share propaganda at the moment. Another way they could drop leaflets by planes over enemy territory. And we saw this example, if you saw the film Dunkirk that I recommend watching. Um, this is an example of one of the leaflets that he finds uh, dropped over overhead. So it's like a little, little poster, like a little um, leaflet that tells you that you are surrounded at Dunkirk and that's why they needed to be evacuated by boat. But that's World War II. We're looking at World War I. So here's an example of World War I. This is an Australian one created by Australian Norman Lindsay. Uh, you can pause these if you like to stop and have a look at the um, images before we look at some of the features of it. It says, will you fight now or wait for this? So this is being what's going to happen. So it depicts German troops with spiked helmets reaching Australia. We know this is Australia because of the typical Australian water tank and the clothes of the Australian man here. Uh, it's aimed to scare Australians into joining up and helping the war effort. So we can see there's a big element of fear in this one. There's, there's a fire, there's um, this man's looking terrified, these Germans are pointing um, rifles at him and, and looking scary with those spiked helmets. Um, and we see someone injured on the ground in front. This is another one. This is a really famous one. This is Uncle Sam. So obviously this is uh, a US example. This one has a real clear call to action, which you would normally see in these posters as well. Just really straightforward telling you to do something. Go to your nearest recruiting station. That's pretty much what it tells you. Sign up for the US Army. So it says, I want you. There's big, bold writing. There's not a lot on the page. He's staring straight at you in the face, pointing straight at you. So this helps to hold the viewer accountable with this direct stare and the finger pointing and the emphasis on you. There's not a lot of writing. It's just straight to the point. This is another example that I recommend you do as a practice. So pause it here, hit pause, try out your own analysis for this poster here. Write a detailed description of what's shown in the poster. So write down what everything that you see in the poster and then number two, explain the message the author is trying to present. So have a close look at it, hit pause, answer one and two, then press play again. Cool, so you've just done that. Let's have a look. Uh, this one is created by Harold, uh, is it Harold or Harry? I can't remember, sorry, Harold Ralph Hop in 1917. Um, this is again from an American perspective because we can see here 
the shores of America. So this mad brute is arriving at the shores of America. Some of the things we can see is that the German en enemy, again, with the spiked helmet, is depicted as a barbarian gorilla arriving in America. Um, his spiked helmet says militarism. He holds an abducted uh, version of the American Lady Liberty. His bloodied club here uh, says German culture or culture on it. His moustache is a bit like the leader of Germany, Kaiser Wilhelm II. Um, you'll also see that often so enemy, enemies were often drawn as animals or monsters or seen as kind of unhuman, so drawn as pests and insects and spiders and stuff like that to make them easier to um, kind of attack as, as an enemy and build support against them. You don't want to depict them as humans. You want to depict them as some kind of monster. It also shows the use of women as victims here to evoke an emotional and defensive response in American men. This is a German example. So it says here in German, help us win by war bonds. So again, this is a way of loaning your money to the government. If you buy these war bonds, you essentially, you buy them, you get the bond, you're giving your money to the government to help them uh, fund the war. The soldier's wearing the typical German rounded steel helmet of the time. He's got a gas mask on his front. He's got the potato masher grenades. He's surrounded by uh, barbed wire. If you zoom in, his eyes are drawn as tiny crosses for some Christian symbolism here as well. So this is an example for Germany. And it's towards their own uh, people. So this is another Australian example. Would you stand by while a bushfire raged? It reads, get busy and drive the Germans back. So these guys are helping out to put out that bushfire, the bushfire being the German attackers. So clear and symbolic Australian example, as everyone understands the threat in Australia of a bushfire and the need for teamwork to help out. You wouldn't do nothing. You'd have to help out because it's going to affect you sooner or later if that bushfire spreads. The man in the foreground here at the front has his back to these working man. He, working man, he's got his hands in his pockets, a sign that he's passive. He's not doing anything to help out. And the poster urges him to get busy to help out, which would likely mean to enlist. And it says down here, this is from the Win the War League. He also looks like he's got a pipe in his mouth. So it's going to just show that he doesn't really care. He's not doing anything. He's um, walking away or turning away. They tend to ask, these posters tend to ask these rhetorical questions like um, this to help inspire the viewer to, to kind of think. It's asking you the question so you think of your own answer. And this is also trying to evoke guilt, obviously, uh, in people who aren't helping out. Then they're, they're not getting busy. They're not doing anything to help the war effort. Lastly, last person. So there was a massive need for women in the factories to produce the weapons ammunition and uniforms needed for the soldiers. And we can see this poster is speaking to the women, clearly women of Britain. So we've got a British example, come into the factories. She looks really proud, standing tall, um, proud and happy of what she's done. She's kind of opening her up, up her arms and she's kind of unleashing all these planes that she's helped to produce in the factories. You can see here, they're producing planes, they're producing tanks. This looks like a large bomber plane um, emerging from the factories. So they're encouraged to go to work in factories to help out. So even if they can't join up to fight, you can still help out in other ways. It's a call to action at the bottom here. Ask at any employment exchange for advice and full details. Uh, again, it's really simple, easy to read, emotive and persuasive, just white on black down here, um, a really simple image as well. So a um, couple of good examples there from different countries of World War I propaganda posters, some of the main features, some examples of what they look like. We need to be able to describe what uh, is shown in those. Uh, and it's a really interesting kind of perspective on that time. Thank you.